Hey guys, welcome back to another video and I hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Today, as you can probably tell, I'm at home and thought today might be a good day to talk to you about how to get started in motorsport photography. It's a question I've been asked a few times. It's not going to be the same path for everyone, but there are some key things that perhaps I can teach you and that you can learn from to start your own journey in motorsport photography. Hopefully you learn a thing or two. While it might be tempting to see the glitz and the glamour of the top tier motorsport, your V8 supercars, Formula One, MotoGP, realistically, that's not gonna be a place where you start. All of these organizations are gonna want a portfolio. They're gonna to wanna to see why they're letting you come along. At the end of the day, media accreditation to these events is a working media's tool. They wanna to get something out of it. If you're not writing for magazines, for newspapers, selling images to the drivers, teams, etc., there really is no need for you to be there. You'll often see that that is one of the prerequisites of getting an accreditation to a major event. How do you get started if you can't start at the top tier? Flip it over go the other way go to the bottom the way I started was by approaching a grassroots drift club and just asking to shoot one of their events just do it on a not-for-profit basis do it for free that sort of thing just get your name in the door and then go from there how do you go and approach these smaller clubs these local drift clubs circuit racing clubs even if you want to take this as a general in sports photography it's all gonna be the same sort of principle 99% of clubs will have a contact us page they may have a dedicated media inquiries in email address or they might just have a generic info at email address doesn't matter what it is just send an email say that you're an up-and-coming photographer you've always wanted to try your hand at shooting X Y and Z and send the email the worst thing that can happen is to say no you've got your first event and you're going along how do you turn this one event into a recurring relationship career progression how do you get to the next step you need to be talking to the drivers you need to be talking to teams the organizing group just be friendly just get to know people the biggest thing I guess is if you say you're gonna send someone photos send them photos being that photography is a portfolio based profession the only way it's gonna work is if people see your work the best way of doing that is to physically hand people your work whether that's sending via email Dropbox or physically printing and sending people photos in, in person or sending people framed photos, they need to see your work. Without that, you got no hope. Probably the next most commonly asked question I get when it comes to motorsport photography. Do I need to spend a lot of money on gear? How do I get into motorsport on the cheap? The simple answer to that is to just go along. It doesn't matter what camera you've got, doesn't matter what lenses you've got. Now, I will say with that, Having a mirrorless or a DSLR camera is almost a requirement. When it comes to investing in your camera gear, buy the minimum camera body generally that you can get away with for what you want, whether that be full frame, APS-C, micro four thirds, whatever. Invest your hard earned money where it matters, in the lens. Doesn't mean go out and spend 20 grand on a 600 f4 but what it does mean is buy the best lenses that you can afford because they will last the longest there are two types of shots that you'll take in in motorsport photography for the most part high shutter speed shots and slow shutter speed shots pretty simple now your high shutter speed shots is where having your low aperture can benefit you because you can use that to separate your foreground or your subject from your background the other type of shot that you'll take is your so slow speed panning shot now these shots generally are taken anywhere between one two hundredth and like one fifth of a second depending on the speed of the car, depending on how much motion blur you want, etc. If you're trying to shoot at one tenth of a second in bright daylight like it is today, unless you've got an ND filter on your camera, to get a shutter speed like that, your aperture has to be stopped down. Sometimes to f8, f11 or worse. If you have a lens, say a 15 to 55, f3.5 to 5.6, you're probably stopping it down more than what the lens is anyway. So that lens isn't holding you back. You don't need the shallow depth of field because the motion blur is separating the car from the background. The key thing to keep in mind when you're building your portfolio of motorsport images, for the most part, the images will need to be true to life. They'll need to be news images, reportage images, that sort of thing. There is a degree of creativity that you can have in those edits. And I'll put up a photo by Jack Martin 
and Daniel Kalish, who are two of Australia's best photographers in both rally and circuit racing, and you can have a look at their stuff. You'll see some of their images are really true to life and others are a bit creative, but you still see important things like the colors of the car, the rough weather conditions and things like that. They're kept accurate as best as possible. The other important thing when it comes to your images is they need to be the best. When you're posting images, don't post images that are not the best that you can do because if people see those, they will think that they're the best you can do. If you really wanna get somewhere, post your best 10, maybe send your best 30 or 40 to drivers or customers or whatever, but don't post rubbish. Now, the final little things that I'll say is especially in Australia, you'll oftentimes need a license or a, I guess a global accreditation in order to start photographing motorsport events. Here in Australia, there are two accreditations that exist depending on who, which confederation runs the event. We have the AASA. You've also got Motorsport Australia or CAMS to shoot these events. Either of those two accreditations is required, which is a brilliant segue, by the way, into safety. Nobody likes to hear about safety. Everybody thinks blah, 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 blah. Nobody ever dies at motorsport, especially not photographers. For the most part, that is true. Thankfully for us, it is a relatively safe endeavor, but that depends on the type of motorsport. Circuit racing for the most part, if you follow the guidelines, you should never be in a position where a car can hit you. The same is true of drifting, although as the cars are inherently out of control, there is more chance a car hitting a wall and, you know, bits of tail light and other stuff hitting you. And that is something that you do have to consider, not just the rubber hitting you in the face. The most dangerous of all motorsports, and I'm sure anybody who's interested in motorsport at all probably knows where I'm going with this, is rallying. The biggest thing to keep in mind with rallying is you should always think of your way out. If I'm standing somewhere and there's a car coming, you need to be thinking that if the car loses it and they come at you, where is your escape route? How do you get out? That might be to make sure there's a tree in your way. A great example of that, if I can find it, have a look at this video. That is an example of why safety matters and keeping that in the back of your mind when you're shooting rallying is such an important thing to do. Because from that video, if that tree's not there, if that tree's not there, trees, he's dead. I'll leave the safety part there. Keep it in mind when you're shooting motorsport because at the end of the day, no shot is worth injury or death. I hope you've learned a little bit about what it takes to get into motorsport photography. You can apply this to all sorts of different photography, general sports, portraits, whatever. It's all the same thing. If you want to get into it, send an email, start your journey. If you've followed my advice and gotten to an event, let me know down in the comments. I'd like to know if what I've told you has helped. If there's any comments that you'd like to share to other photographers on things that you've learned, leave them in the comments and hopefully this video can be a good source of information for people. With that all said and done, if you like this video, leave a like, leave a comment down below telling me what you liked or any other feedback. If you wanna see more videos from me about motorsport photography or even sports photography or photography in general, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you get notified of all my future videos. With that all said and done, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.